This is a quick video about some features that I want you to be able to use on your calculators. Now, most of the calculators that I see in my classes are the TI-30XA or the Sharp EL531W. I've put a couple of videos up on D2L about using the features on those two calculators. You can always search for your own calculator on YouTube and look up these features as well. So some of the things you should be aware of with your calculator is the order of operations. So if you were to punch this into your calculator, your calculator would automatically multiply these two things together before it added the four. So the order of operations is whenever it sees a multiplication or a division, it'll do that first. And so this would give you 19 on your calculator. If in fact you wanted it to do the four plus three first, you would have to force it with brackets. And that would then force your calculator to add four plus three and then multiply by five to get 35. Okay, so if, you, if it's okay to do the multiplication first, then you don't need the brackets. Something else to be aware of, if you're trying to do something like five divided by three times eight, you don't need to use brackets for that. On your calculator, you would put five divided by three. Now, you don't put times eight because that would put the eight on top. You put divided by eight. And that would then do this calculation five divided by three with the eight on the bottom as well. Now, of course, you're welcome to use the brackets, but it's just a little bit more work. Another cool feature on your calculator you probably don't use is the one over X key or sometimes it's above a button as a second function and it looks like x to the minus one. It's when you wanna take the reciprocal of a number. So if you wanted to do the operation one sixth plus one eighth, you, you don't have to go one divided by six plus one divided by eight. You can just go six and then flip it over plus eight and flip it over equals and you should get 0 0.2917. So that's a very handy thing on your calculator you should use. Uh, there, I put a, a YouTube link to how to use powers and um, roots. And so you should definitely be able to do squares using the X squared button and cubes using the X cubed button. Now, if you don't have an X cubed button, on your calculator, it might look like this, y to the x, in which case you would type in your calculator two, that's the y, and then you'd hit that button y to the x, and then three, that's the x, equals, and you should get eight. Also, you should be able to do square roots, so like the square root of 25, five, did you have a square root button? If you need to do a cube root, like the cube root of 27, which is three, you, if you don't have a cube root button above the X cubed button, then you would have a button that looks like this, X root Y. And that would be above the Y to the X button. So it would be a second function. The first number that you put in, so you put in 27 is the Y, and then you'd go second, function and then you'd hit the button that has that and then you'd go three and you should get three. So like I say, there are videos to do a little more detail of that if you wanna look at that. Another thing you should definitely be using on your calculator is the pi button. So you don't wanna type in 3.14159, you just wanna punch pi. If so if you wanna go four times pi, you just go four times pi button and you'll get four pi, which is nice. Uh, scientific notation is when you have, and I've put a video up about scientific notation. Uh, if you wanted to put in 2.5 times 10 to the eight divided by 4.2 times 10 to the four on your calculator, this times 10 to the, you do not use the 10 to the X button, you use the EE -E button or on, the other calculator is EXP, one of the two. And when you punch EE, -E, so you say you go 2.5, and when you hit that EE, -E, say to yourself, times 10 to the, 
and then you put the exponent eight. And then you go divided by 4.2 times 10 to the four. And on your calculator, this should give you 59522.3810 and possibly even more decimals. Now, I don't wanna see numbers like that on assignments or tests, way too many digits. You need to tell your calculator to chop off the number here. And that's what the videos are about for these different calculators. It's the function fix, and it tells it to chop off any number after two decimal places. So do fix two, or if you have, that's for the TI, if you have the sharp, or maybe that's for the sharp, anyway, the other one is, is the FSE and the tab button. So make sure you look at the videos, how to set the number of decimal places on your calculator, because you definitely wanna do that. I don't wanna see a whole bunch of decimals on your assignments. Now, also, we often don't wanna see big numbers like that either. We wanna put it into scientific notation. And I've put a, links to videos about how to do that on your calculator as well. Basically, if this were a number that were the answer to some problem, I would wanna make that look like this. 5.95 times 10 to the three. That's how I would like to see it on your assignments. So neat and tidy, two decimal places, scientific notation. And on your calculator, this times 10 to the three, some calculators show the 10, most don't. They'll just show 5.95 and then there'll be a space and then there'll be a zero three and they mean times 10 to the three. Okay, so that's good for your calculators. Um, there are some calculator exercises to practice and that should be it.